my guest, Mr. Leon Pendarvis. <laughs> Pen, you hit New York City in 1969 with a dream. Uh, the dream was to become a professional musician and um, kind of work the streets of New York and see if I could uh, execute that dream, and that's pretty much what I've been able to do. Now, I got to ask you this question, okay, because, you know, Saturday nights, if you and I wanted to get together, you couldn't do it because you have been on Saturday Night Live for 30 years. So here's my question. How many times have you actually watched the show? <laughs> I TV it top to bottom. I probably viewed it a couple of times in my life. Uh, after you do that show and you get back at 2.30 in the morning, it's not like the kind of thing you want to just turn on the next day and go, let me just look at this again. So after all of these years, it must feel like a family on the set. Is that right? All right. There is a family on that set, uh, especially uh, my musician colleague. Penn, other than being a musician, of course, that was involved in this wonderful event, you also have a very personal connection to mesothelioma. Well, unfortunately, my, my wife, who's now my late wife, got diagnosed uh, with the disease in 2003, March, and um, courageous battle for six years. She passed this year. Uh, January 22nd, so I was a primary caretaker, and uh, we lived through it from the day she got diagnosed until the day that she checked out. The difficult thing about diagnosing this disease is that it has a lot of symptoms that are similar to others. Well, I was there the day she got diagnosed. Um, I'll remember, I, remember it, I remember it as it was yesterday, um, and uh, shock. Did you seek any organizations or any kind of information to be able to learn more about this? Uh, Peter, um, I am the research poster child. <laughs> uh, thank God for the internet these days. Joined an organization called MARF, which is an acronym that stands for Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation, uh, started by Dr. Harvey, Harvey Pass and several other people. Well, I understand that you've been given a very unique opportunity as it relates to mesothelioma. So they made Bob a board of director after that. He called me last week and kind of doing a debriefing of the event itself and said, we'd like to offer you something. So now you're talking to the junior board of director, I guess you would call me. I am the latest board of director for MARF. You know, being a musician, I'm wondering if in any sense at all, music helped you through this horrifying experience. Yes. Uh, Jill was a singer. She had her own outlets separate from me. I mean, music can be healing. Uh, there's something very therapeutic about it. Fortunately, during Jill's last months on this planet, uh, her mom, God bless her soul, and her husband came in from Seattle and basically did triage, so to speak. They were there for the duration, all the way to the end. So it allowed me to be able to go and do the show. Um, and I would be, you know, a nervous Nelly while I was there, but I knew I had, they had my back. And being at the show, um, that family um, environment that you referenced earlier uh, was always there. So there would be people taking me aside and going, how are you doing? Even if it was just a hug or whatever. But the music itself uh, allowed us to, allowed me to be able to kind of work some of this out sometimes. <laughs>